Well, hello. As you know, we've been put in lockdown for 21 days, and that means the car she's not going to drive for 21 days. Now, with that little reality in mind, um, you might want to consider a few things, like maybe to disconnect the battery on your car. Cars typically use lead acid batteries, and as you know, lead acid batteries don't like to get cold, and they don't like to get flat. So if any one of those two things are a, are a possibility, then you're probably better off actually disconnecting the battery. A couple of things to consider before you do this. Number one, it is dangerous. When you work with electricity, it is always dangerous. Don't work with electricity if you're not comfortable with it. Number two, do wear rubber-soled shoes, always. Number three, stay away from alcohol-based hand sanitizers and stuff like this because your battery can spark when you either connect or disconnect the battery and that spark could obviously cause, it's not funny, could cause your, could cause your hands to um, ignite if, uh, if you're concerned about that. A couple of other things that you would like to maybe consider. Um, first off is do let your tracking company know that you're going to disconnect your battery because the moment you disconnect the battery they're going to get all panicky and uh, that might result in the cops arriving at your door. Second thing is sometimes you have a car and I know older models of, um, of the Nissans, the 350Zs and so on, especially with the original radios in it. Um, once you disconnect the battery, you get a code on the radio when you reconnect it. Make sure that you have your code for your radio before you disconnect the battery. Otherwise you can reconnect your battery and it's going to be an absolute mission to get that code out of um, the manufacturer. So there's a couple of things you can do to mitigate the whole situation of the car standing for, for 21 days. The one we're going to show you now is to disconnect the negative pole on the battery. You can also, if you have one, connect the trickle charger to the battery. And that will just keep the battery up to, up to its uh, level where it's supposed to be on a continuous basis. And, and with a trickle charger you can store it indefinitely. It doesn't use a lot of power either. You could of course um, recharge the battery after it's flat with a traditional charger. That is definitely not the best idea. You do not want a lead acid battery to get completely flat because they do damage. I've heard someone saying that you just start your car every couple of days and let it idle. That is definitely not going to work. It takes way more power to start the car than what you're going to generate in allowing the car to idle for 5 or 10 minutes. You need to drive a minimum of probably 5 kilometers or 3 miles to be able to recharge the battery sufficiently after you've started the car. So the only thing you're going to achieve is to actually just um, let the battery go completely flat quicker. The other thing that was suggested is start the car and let it idle up to temperature. This is definitely not a good idea. Um, especially with modern cars, they need the airflow over the motor to be able to work properly. Um, you've got turbochargers that need intercoolers to cool those things down. You very definitely don't want to do that because you're probably going to cause more damage to your car um, than just actually allowing to let the battery go flat. So then it's the lesser of two evils. So trickle charger, yes. Do disconnect the battery, yes. Please, please be careful. If you're not comfortable doing this, everybody knows an IT geek somewhere or someone that's a mechanic or someone that's comfortable with working on cars and working with mechanical stuff. Go and get that person. Okay, don't do this if you're not comfortable with it. If you are comfortable, let me quickly show you how to do it. I'm just going to get the bonnet open. The bonnet is the thing in the front for the Americans. I wonder what you'll do if you if you drive um, a car that doesn't have an engine in the front, like a Koenigsegg or something. I don't even know where the batteries are on those things. Bam! Right, so, on the Nissan 370Z, this is a 2011 model, the battery is located over there, it's got a big sign that says battery, it says positive on the right hand side, negative on the left hand side, that's of course assuming that you still have the factory set up, which we do. Positive on the right hand side with lots of cables, negative on the left hand side with only the, the one little thing over there. And this particular battery uses a 10 millimeter socket. Let me show you a little 10 millimeter socket which we've got already out here. I don't know what that is in American, but many other cars will use a 12 millimeter socket or a 13 millimeter socket, and that's about a half an inch in, in American. Right, so the only thing you're going to do is get onto this hook over here. 
disconnect it or just uh, um, loosen the bolt. You don't have to take it all the way off. As soon as it's loose enough, pull it off the terminal and just stow it away carefully where it can't touch anything. And that's really as simple as it is. Now, when time comes and you need to use the car again, it's a reverse of the process. Simply go here, reconnect the terminal, tighten up the nut and close everything down as you found it. Please be careful. You have a positive terminal and negative terminal over here. These things will never ever meet. They should never meet because it's dangerous. The, the, the power of these little batteries are incredible. You could probably get 80 amps out of a battery like this, which is a significant amount of power. You don't want to mess with that. All right, so please be careful. Um, be healthy, be safe, and I'll check you next time. Always remember, life is too short to drive boring cars.